Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today is the day that we move our baby chicks out of the brooder and into the mobile coop from the outside. We've got a little bit of drama to talk about. We've got a fox that's been roaming around the farm here. We'll tell you a little bit about that. We'll show you our mobile coop setup. We'll talk about predator control and we'll have a little bit of fun here on the farm. So come along as we take our birds and introduce them to grass for the first time out on pasture. All right, woo! Guys, before we start this video, I want to thank Meyer Hatchery for helping out with the chickens this year. This is just the best place in the country to get your birds. Great genetics and they treat their birds with respect. As you can see up there, those are our Cornish cross birds left over from last year. Let's get busy. So we've got to drive up to the place where we store our mobile coop and it's basically on the edge of the forest up here and we only have one coop and it's a 10 by 12 coop it's made out of pvc if you haven't seen that video there'll be a link to it at the end of this video it's called you've never seen anything like this it's uh, about our mobile coop and how we built it we've got a whole series on chickens and raising chickens so there's some awesome stuff out here on our channel so we normally store it right over here and we'll just pull right up here i've got a rope attached to the front very very simple so we'll take our rope and this is what we move the coop with every day we pretty much just take it right here and just slide it and we'll just loop this right over top of the ball here on the front of the gator basically we're just gonna back the gator up and we'll back all the way up to where we want to put our chicks for their first start and the whole process here is moving them through our lawn so you could do this in a small plot of land in the city we basically will move the birds either every one day or every two days these first couple days as they're young we'll just move them every two days and then as manure progresses in other words as they start pooping more we'll move them more and as they start matting the grass down more we'll move them more let's drag this thing on back very very lightweight setup <laughs> now for bad drivers there is no compensation it's just me bad driver <laughs> all right let's get back on the gator i had to drag it <laughs> back from the bushes <laughs> That gator is the most used tool on our farm, hands down by far. I use that thing all day, every day, just about. I could have easily drugged that out of the woods and drug it down here 200 yards, but the gator just makes life so much easier. From now on, we'll move this plot by plot, square by square throughout the yard. And you can see the yard pops from this. It just makes the yard pop that chicken manure doesn't kill the grass unless you leave the chickens on it for too long. So if you're moving it on a daily basis, square, 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 it will make your lawn pop. So if you have a nice place in the city, you don't have to worry about it killing your grass. Now, as we're putting chickens in here and as we're putting the feeders and the waters in here, you can look at the construction of this coop. It's very simple. It's made of PVC drain pipe. At the end of the video, I'll walk you all the way around it and I'll talk to you about the construction materials and the sizes of most of the things. It's it's pretty simple to build. All you got to do is glue it together, screw it together, and you're good to go. Now I'm going to show you the waterers and the feeders that we use that make this very, very easy. So we can lift them out, move the coop, and set them back in. Lift them out, fill them up, move the coop, set them back in. And the chickens will follow the feeders and the waterers every day too. It's really, really cool. It's an interesting setup and it makes your meat birds taste great. For demonstration purposes right quick, I'll show you how the lid goes on. Basically, we just leave this lid on and we put in removable screws. So we put a zip a screw in here, zip a screw in here, and a screw in there. And every day we'll move it and it just takes pretty much one hand or two hands and we just slide it just like so. Very, very easy. It's very lightweight, but it's not so lightweight that it blows away in the wind. A lot of folks are really concerned with the design of this and saying, oh my goodness, one windstorm, that thing is gonna blow away. It's so low to the ground that it doesn't blow away. And this shiny tin, not a dark colored tin, reflects the sunlight and keeps the birds cool. Now we've got all the feeders and stuff stored from last year in our old tobacco barn. So we're gonna go up to the tobacco barn. It's kind of a treat going up there. 
you guys might notice a few other things going on on the farm. Uh, the chickens aren't the only thing that's going on on the farm vlog here. Guys, be sure and pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more fun stuff going on here at the Stony Ridge. This is our tobacco shack, our tobacco barn. This is a circa 19, I'm gonna say teens, tobacco barn, hand built tobacco barn. This is where they used to hang tobacco up back in the old days. Pretty cool. We'll try and go in there. The light's pretty low, but, and it's a mess. So don't hold it against me. It's a storage area. This was a huge mess, a huge storage area, a huge disaster of a mess. It's still a moderate mess, but I got a big pile of trash to take to the dump on the trailer now instead of a big pile of stuff we might use every day. Into the tobacco barn we go. This is the tobacco barn. Those are called tier or pier poles. I think they're called tier poles. And this is where they used to string up tobacco and dry it. This would make a pretty awesome cabin, huh? Really cool. This is also where we store our fancy feeders. There is one fancy feeder. Here is our waterer. Let's talk really quickly about the feeders and the waterers that we use. This is a five gallon, easy clean type waterer. And it has a little float in there that allows water to trickle out right through here. It works great on a slope. In other words, when you're moving chickens on a hillside or when you're on a mobile coop, the water tends to drip out of your standard type waterer, not with this. And if we want to clean it, all we got to do is open it up and you can get right in there. So it's a whole lot easier than unscrewing and sliding and taking stuff apart. All you do is put water in there and it works, it works great. Let's show you the feeder. So here is the feeder system that we use. This is easy to handle. I think it's four feet long, maybe five feet. I think it might be a five foot long feeder. This will hold about 25 pounds of chicken feed. The chickens, 50 chickens, will go through one of these in a day once they're about five weeks old. These birds are two weeks old now and they're going out, they're already feathered out and they're going out on pasture. What's really interesting is that when we restricted their food intake, when we restricted the feed that we gave them, a high protein mix of feed, when we restricted that prior to their slaughter, prior to putting them in the freezer, the birds were absolutely full of grass. And being out on pasture like this allows them to get the microbes, allows them to get the bugs, allows them to eat the grass, it allows them to get the stress of hot and cold and sunlight and dark and movement and all the things that they don't get in a commercial chicken house, which builds immunity. And that immunity that it builds with the chickens transfers to you when you eat the chicken, if you get what I mean. In other words, if you eat garbage, you're garbage. And if you eat good, your body's made of good stuff. Everything you eat is what your body's made of. So if all you ate was beans and weenies for the last six months, your body is made up of the things that were in those beans and weenies. Yeah. So here's how I do my lid. I just lift it, slide it up here. I set my feeder and my waterer right here. And we're gonna go ahead, get our feed, our water set up and get our baby birds. It's so fun watching these baby birds the first time they see grass. They're like, huh, what's this? I don't know what to do. And by the end of their cycle out here, they know what to do. You move them to a new patch of grass and they're like, hop, 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 hop. Now we'll set our feeder over in here and we'll set our water into our bucket and we'll pour our water in. Now I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking right now. Man, I gotta carry a five gallon bucket of water down every day. Well, you don't, you can set a five gallon bucket here and then one there and then one there on down the line. If you go to the gym and walk on a treadmill, that's exercise and so is this. What's better exercise? feeding your family or walking into a wall at the gym. Now here's the funnest part for me, watching these birds see grass for the first time. There you go guys, there you go. They pretty much have no idea <laughs> what to do, but they do know how to poop, <laughs> which fertilizes the lawn like crazy. Well, what do you think? 
This is Pastured Poultry 101 right here, guys. This coop works absolutely great. It's very easy to move around. It held up all last year. It's holding up this year. We've been through two hurricanes with wind sustained at 80 miles an hour. It did not blow away. We have not had any issues with predators getting in it, digging through it, getting through the wire. I think if a predator had its head set on getting in here, it would get in here, as with any chicken coop. I've got some solar powered motion lights that I'm probably gonna put on the perimeter edges of this just to deter predators because what's a predator's biggest fear being discovered so the lights will really help with that but so far so good this will be our second year we're going to start a new prototype and we'll probably split these chickens into two groups of 25 so stay tuned on the vlog as we build our new prototype if you want to see how this one was built there'll be a link right up here just click that link and check it out so guys i hope you enjoyed today's vlog the birds flock together even if they weren't in the coop, they would still all be occupying this small 120 square foot area. Over the lifespan of these birds, each bird will be able to occupy 2,000 square feet of sunshine, grass, rocks, sticks, worms, and bugs. More than any bird you've probably ever tasted in your life. I encourage you to do something like this. Thanks a lot for watching today, guys. Please pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you come back and see me, I promise I'll show you something cool. I've got a lot of oil changes to do today. I've got to change the oil in every truck on the farm, all the tractors, and the gator today. So I got to get busy. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. All right? Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Like some beans.